All right, back here live at ringside. Getting prepared for our first bout tonight. Derek Jefferson and Marcellus Brown. Jefferson, of course, undefeated, 18-0, 16 wins by way of knockout. Marcellus Brown, 21-8, 19 knockouts. And again, as we alluded to in the open, not somebody who's going to stick around and go to the distance. Only been eight rounds one time. But we're going to go up to our ring announcer, T.D. Smith, now with our official introductions. T.D. Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions, in conjunction with the third largest casino in the world, Grand Casino Tunica, and Corona Beer, La Cerveza Mastina, present the Heavyweight Explosion! This 10-round heavyweight bout, your judges at ringside, Elmo Adolf, David Taranto, and Randy Phillips, your referee, Fred Steinwinder III. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the combatants. In the blue corner, he hails from Detroit, Michigan. He stands six foot six, weighs 253 pounds. He has a professional record of 18 wins, no losses, 15 wins by knockout. He's the 1994 National Golden Gloves Champion, Olympic Festival Gold Medalist, in the gold trunks with the black trim, ladies and gentlemen, Derek Jefferson! And now, in the red corner, from Benton Harbor, Michigan, he stands an imposing seven feet tall, weighs 235 pounds, with a professional record of 22 wins, eight losses, 20 of his wins by knockout. He's a four-time Golden Gloves champion, one-time national champion, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue trunks, Marcellus more than a conqueror, Brown. You both received instructions earlier. I want a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. All right, we're fighting by Mississippi rules tonight. Ten-point must system in effect. Of course, the mandatory eight count. There's a standing eight count, and there's a three knockdown rule, and you could be saved by the bell in the last round only. And the tail of the tape tonight. Of course, Brown tonight, seven foot, reminds us of the Will Chamberlain-Ali matchup, but Jefferson, of course, six foot six. He's got almost a 20-pound weight advantage. Big reach advantage for Brown. Let's see if he can take advantage of it, and there's our first bell. Schedule for 10. John, you can't help but think about that Will Chamberlain Ali fight that was being put together back by Bob Arum in the 70s, of course, never came off. I've never seen a seven foot heavyweight. Well, you may not be seeing one tonight because I think he's about 6'10 and a half. <laughs> Are Sorry you to saying burst your there's bubble. an exaggeration here? Yeah, he's close to seven feet, but let's face it, the guy is tall. Can you imagine him fighting Carlos Monroe? The referee, to break him, would have to get a, a stool out of the corner. And Jefferson's no slouch either at a stated six foot six. Both fighters very busy in 1998. Jefferson, five fights in 98, five wins. Only one of them going the distance, and that was over... Levi Billups, who we'll see later on tonight in our main event, he won a 10-round decision over Billups. Billups, one of the few fighters to take him the distance. Marcellus Brown, six times in 1998. All wins, except the one time he got stopped by Lehman Brewster. That was in March of 98. Suspect chin on the part of Brown. He's been stopped six times in his career. He is a fast starter who can look good for a couple of three rounds and then caves into the pressure. That's what happened against Brewster, Tommy Morrison, Ahmed Abdeen, and Trevor Burbick got him early in his second round way back in 1994, five, almost five years ago. Well, his pro career started back in 1989 with a first round knockout of Kevin Poindexter. 
30 years of age, will turn 31 this March. Oddly enough, he and Derek Jefferson almost within a couple of days of each other. Jefferson actually 15 days older than Marcellus Brown, but his pro career didn't start until June of 95. Under a minute to go, Fred Steinwein to the third, separates the fighters. Marcellus Brown, he's in the blue shorts with the black stripe. Got him at the big and tall shop. Derek Jefferson, he's in the gold with the black stripe. This could be a very interesting fight, as we can see early here in the first round. No feeling out process. Interestingly enough, John, and we'll see how it goes as time goes on, but Marcellus Brown is actually the most experienced fighter to date that Derek Jefferson's fought. He brought Jefferson along very carefully thus far. Sort of a wild first round as we come to the end. We're scheduled for 10 here on the explosion. Oh, and they're fighting after the bell. What's Fred Steinweiner waiting for? Referee fell asleep there. Shades of two a Rockman there. <laughs> we we'll take a look at what happened here at the end of round number one. Steinweiner finally jumps in there. A good five seconds and a little wiggle from Marcellus Brown to punctuate the event. As we look into the corner of Mr. Jefferson. We begin round number two. Derek Jefferson doesn't want to have that. Amateurishly, Marcellus Brown thinks it's a sparring session, leaves that left hand out to tap gloves, and Derek Jefferson had no part of it. And he was very inspired between rounds by his veteran trainer, Bill Miller. Good to see him back in action after a brief illness. He was with James Tony for a number of years. Bronco McCart. Tell you what, Jefferson showing no hesitation to try to move inside that jab and work to the body and throw that short right hand up against Brown's temple. But again, you see the 80, well, the problem is he's got an 83 inch reach, does Marcellus Brown, but he's really not using it effectively. Right now, Ernie's making himself shorter. He's fighting down to Jefferson's height by not using that good jab. Oh, nice body work there by Jefferson too. And He's exactly sized properly for Jefferson to go downstairs. You know what I think is happening here early on is that Brown is getting suckered into a real phone booth kind of a brawl. He's got to use his boxing skills, his lateral movement, keep pecking away, try to break down Jefferson round by round. But see, he's throwing these wild haymakers, that wild left hook. John, what you're describing, though, that you'd like to see him doing or that he should be doing, not necessarily you'd like to see it, he doesn't necessarily have those skills. It's as we mentioned in the open. He's either going to get taken out or he's going to take you out. He's not somebody that's looking to win by decision. 19 knockouts in his 21 wins. Right now he's looking down to Al Brown, his trainer from Atlanta. Brown telling him what to do. But so far, Jefferson has really kind of controlled the tempo here in the first round and a half. Well, as we come on the one-minute mark here in round number two, I think what really set the tempo for this round is when Marcellus Brown stuck out his you hand know what? this was a sparring session and he got tagged. I'm getting the feeling that Jefferson doesn't want to be in the ring anymore. He's complaining about his eye right now. And there's bad blood, Arnie. Bad gash on the face of Brown. Brown. Blood. There may have been a clash of heads when they were in front of us here along the ropes. Well, Stein, Fred Steinwinder to third. Asking the doctor to come into the ring. They're going to look. And they're calling it. And I'm trying to check right now. One of the Mississippi officials saying that it was a clash of heads. And I think they're stopping this fight. They're calling the fight off. Well, you see the protests. 
are going to go unrewarded. Now, I believe by Mississippi rules, this will be declared a no contest, John. Where, and there's there's a conference going on at ringside, but I believe it didn't go long enough in a 10-rounder. It would have had to go four rounds in order to go to the scorecards. This should be declared a no contest. And Jefferson is the guy who's going to be mad. You think Brown is upset here. But Jefferson looked like he was going to probably hold the advantage in this fight. He's not going to get a victory out of this. Well, we're going to be interested to see now if we can get on our videotape replay here where the heads might have banged. This is round number two. Here it comes. There they come. They come together right there. Yep, it was right in front of us. And you saw Jefferson, uh, excuse me, Marcellus Brown bitterly complain to the commission doctor he could go on. In the past, one of the knocks on Marcellus Brown was he really didn't have the heart and desire that if you hit him a couple of rounds, he would shrivel up and quit. Tonight, it's the accidental headbutt that ends the fight in the second round and we're going to have a no contest and, I, and i'm just wondering i'm taking a look up here right now at marcellus brown and i wonder if the doctor might have had a quick whistle here john well the cuts up on the forehead near the brow it's a place where the blood could go into the eye but certainly he didn't give it a very long look. It didn't appear to have a very long look. And perhaps at least you give it, you wipe it off and give the corner one shot at it. And we but, saw the matchmaker, Eric Botcher, jump up, very upset that the fight was being stopped. Of course, he could do nothing about it. Mississippi rules. All right, well, we're going to find out exactly technically what the actual rules were. And we're going to give it up to T.D. Smith, and he's going to give us the official time of the stoppage and exactly what the state's calling it. Well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get some sort of an official announcement. All right, we're gonna try to find out what's going on here. We're, our John Saracino's making his way into the ring, and we're gonna find out. We're under the impression that under Mississippi rules, you would not be going to scorecards here unless they're saying that that shot was not called, caused by an unintentional headbutt. The only thing that would allow this, in my opinion, to be a TKO would be if it was not an unintentional headbutt and was caused by a punch. John Saracino making his way to the ring right now, going to try to find out exactly what took place. He's conferring with referee... Fred Steinwein to the third at the other side of the ring. Nevertheless, if that holds, then Derek Jefferson would improve to a record of 19 and 0. And that would be his 17th win by way of knockout. But we're going to take a look at action here from round number two. This is another flurry that led up, but I have a hard time believing where that cut was that it could have possibly even been caused by a punch. It was too hard, far up. John, what did you learn? Well, referee Steinweiner told me that he never saw the accidental headbutt, so he never ruled it an accidental headbutt. Therefore, officially, it's not an accidental headbutt, and the fighter is unable to, the fight is stopped, so Jefferson wins.